My name is Deb Feiler, and I would like to share my thesis project with you. I created a model unit of instruction using our district LMS Schoology. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, I am inside my district LMS Schoology, and this is the model unit of, of instruction. And the goal was to create a course that teachers could use to help improve their own course construction. Many teachers we have in the district will just post a bunch of links with very little context, no use of a variety of different types of materials to engage the students and to speak to their different learning modalities and they have very little context or use of images to help make the material make sense. So the curriculum director, the technology director, and myself discussed this, and we felt there was a real need to have some kind of a sample for teachers. So I put this course together, and in addition to the actual content, which, for the, which is for the students in green, and every green folder is a different folder you would use with either 8th grade or high school American history students. And I put together the yellow folders, which actually has information for our teachers who would be taking this model unit of instruction course over a two-month period. And this would allow them to understand what's going on in the green folder and have some additional resources to learn how to build a course like this. So the first thing I have is this um, information about the course, what influenced them. We've talked a lot about these topics and these um, types of things right here in our professional development through the years in our district and some more recently than others and we are looking for ways to put that back together and make that all encompassing and not just something that we learned one year and then we didn't do anything with it the next. So we're trying to make help the teachers make that connection. And I talked about just what I spoke about, the yellow and the green folders, the social studies particular content that was covered. Um, interestingly enough, this idea of the Enlightenment and kind of what led up to the writing of the Declaration of Independence is very similar in the eighth grade social studies standards in Ohio, as well as the high school American history social studies standards. So I was able to use both of those. It does apply the, a lot of ELA standards throughout the unit if a teacher wanted to delve into that and collaborate with um, ELA teacher and make a unit that way. Um, I did not post grading categories and learning objectives for most of the materials. And the reason I chose to not do that is because in our district, we have a lot going on right now with transitioning to standards-based grading. And there's a lot of discussion in the eighth grade level and the high school level or even different than the K-6 levels that we've already done. And I didn't want that to stop people from looking at this course as a whole and trying to grasp what I was trying to show them for structuring and types of materials. I didn't want them to get hung up in the grading categories and the points and all of that because that's not that was not my objective at all. So I left that off um, outside of the two assessments um, so that, that people could just focus on what I was trying to show them on how to build a good course. And the you as a student in the course talks about how our teachers would go through this course, which was written for students in the green folders, and proceed through and do the all activities and really engage in the materials that I've created. I really want them to look at more in depth what I was talking about when I was referencing these things, which again, I said many of these we've discussed in professional development over the last five to seven years. 
And so I wanted to have some video and text resources for them to remind themselves or delve back into if they weren't with us for that long in the district and be able to go see and, and do some more reading and get some more information on those um, topics and those models that we were that I'm referencing throughout and that I used <clears throat> as I created the course. So as our teachers would proceed through my course, they would first open up the yellow folder and they would open up each individual item and I would give a brief explanation on that. Um, I would also provide some additional information. So this one uses a discrepant event inquiry, and so many of them may not have heard of that, and so they can click right here and go get some other information about that if they've never heard of that type of a strategy. And so I tried to point those types of things out every time. So again, this, then they're all the, the folders, the yellow folders are set up like this. Kind of a brief explanation about it and then some more information and more resources for them about what I've, the different types of materials and learning strategies or anything like that that I'm using for this. I really hope to maybe open up their eyes and show them some different things they either have heard of it and have not been using and forgot about or things maybe they've never heard of before. Again, a lot of our teachers are just posting a bunch of links to stuff and if a student was not in the classroom at the time to hear the instruction in the context that went with that piece of material, they would have no idea what to do with it. So a lot of students maybe hear the teacher lecturing once, but would benefit from being able to hear that information two or three times. And if there are no videos or anything like that, they don't have that opportunity to replay and, and go over in their mind and help with their understanding. So that's partly what I was shooting for. So this would be what a teacher would use with a eighth grader or a American history high school student. And the goal would be for our teachers to go through this unit as a student in the course. And so they would click on everything, they would do everything, go through and do all the activities. Um, again, I didn't just put a link. I tried to give a little context, tried to use some things that would engage the students and really immerse them in the content as they learned about it. I tried to create things that would enable them to go get information instead of the teacher always being the deliverer of the information, trying to get them to be the curator of the information and bring it back in. And then as a group, discuss it and make sure all the students knew everything that I needed them to know from my content standards. So that's what I was shooting for. I, this particular unit gave me a great opportunity to put a lot of primary source um, images in to further, you know, try to help set set the tone and give them a visual context for things. So that is uh, really what I tried to do. Tried to give them some ideas how to do this um, throughout the course. I'm trying to show ways that they can use different types of materials to keep it interesting, to do what best needs to be done for the type of instruction that was needing to be to happen. Give the students opportunities to work independently, give them opportunities to work with a partner, sometimes as a small group, present information to the class as a small group, just a variety of different ways to keep them engaged with this. I did get some um, feedback in a discussion with one of the history teachers who said they really struggle with a topic like this because the students find it very irrelevant and very boring. And so keeping that in mind, I really tried to make that something that they could actually really be more engaged in. So all of my green folders are set up this way. Again, the yellow folder is for teacher information 
as the teacher goes through my course on how to develop a more complete Schoology course for their students. Subsequent folders actually then talk about the Declaration of Independence and have the students explore information about the Declaration of Independence and then bringing this into the context of relevancy of today, of how things are still occurring with the Declaration of Independence yet today with social media and bringing that into the final assessment which actually talks about the grievances that Texas and California sometimes bring up and making that connection with grievances the colonists had and seeing if the students can make that connection, find out what the issues are in California and in Texas, find the correlations, bring that bring that together and make those connections and make it relevant to things that are happening today with the general idea of people being unhappy with their government and wanting to do something about it. So I tried to bring that last piece in of making this whole idea of the Enlightenment and grievances and the Declaration of Independence somewhat relevant to things that are going on in current times. So I hope you enjoy looking at the course and I'll be anxious to hear your feedback and see what you think. Thank you for looking.